It's 8 p.m. and a bakery that should ordinarily be silent at this time is bustling. Working under the cover of darkness is just one of the survival tactics this and other small businesses here have had to employ to stay afloat. We are now spending sleepless nights at work. It's the only way they can meet their orders. Power cuts, some for as long as 16 hours per day, mean it's no longer business as usual. Previously, you could walk into this food court at any hour of the day and get a bite to eat. But because of the load shedding, management here has been forced to cut down their schedule to just two, three hour shifts per day. It's a catch-22 for small businesses. The downtime adversely affects revenue, while the cost of running generators all day cuts into profits. Bigger concerns like mines and large manufacturers have tried to secure supply, albeit at a higher cost. A lot of our industries and factories are on what is called a ring-fenced tariff, where essentially industry is paying a little bit more for electricity, but is protected and has a higher assurance of supply. Given a choice of a uh, higher cost of electricity and no electricity, I think most businesses that have stayed the course, most of the resilient businesses will say, let's have that power at a premium, but let's look long term at addressing the, the, the situation. Government has said it's pursuing no less than 14 power supply projects that could see the country become a net exporter of electricity in the next five years. It's no immediate relief though for industries that are battling to stay afloat and ramp up capacity utilization from the current 36%. People are skeptical about implementation and timely implementation. Zimbabwe's current power requirement is 2,200 megawatts. Supply has dropped to just 900 megawatts following a halt in pumping at Kariba Dam. Government says after all its planned projects come on stream, the country will generate 4,000 megawatts. Farai Mwakutuya, CCTV, Harare, Zimbabwe.